The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 25th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question but you can't call in, go ahead and send me an email. Send that off early and send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's down 60, the S&P's off 27, the NASDAQ 103, the Russell 23. Two tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, and one and three tenths percent, respectively. To the downside, you've got the semis off 2%. The trainees are off nearly 3%, down 425 points. Gold is off 3 bucks. Silver's down 54 cents. Light three crude is off a buck 93. The um, Natural gas is off four pennies, and the 30-year treasury is up one and a half points, trading out at 132.08. Lead the charge. Dollar-wise, the upside, you got Med Pace Holdings up 27 bucks, nearly a 15% move. Hubble Inc., 27 bucks, 11% move. Simpson Manufacturing, 11 bucks, 10% move. Moody's Corp up almost 10, 3% move, and Spotify up about 6%, $7.80. To the downside is MS, uh, MSCI Inc., off 27 bucks, 5% there. Thermo Fisher Scientific, 18 bucks or 3%. Ameriprise down. Down 18, six percent. UPS down 18, nine percent in service now down about four percent. That's a seventeen dollar plus move to the uh, downside. Let's begin the day by taking a look at what's going on in so well. Let's first let's let's start how we have recently. Let's take a look at what's going on with regard to market bread. Let's start with the 30-minute market bread dials. Here we're getting very close to a potential crossover. This is for the S&P 500. We have 170. Of, boy, take that back. We already have the crossover. We have 170 instruments trading above profile, 139 below. So on a 30-minute basis for the ES Mini, conditions, market bread conditions are bullish. With regard to the NDX 100, let's see what is its, its conditions for its 30-minute time frame. Here what we see is a 25 above, 37 below. Low. So we're at odds with regard to those two. So the NQ, bearish for its 30 minute, the ES mini, bullish. Let's take a look at the other four time frames out here. Let's take a look at the uh, daily, weekly, monthly, and I'm sorry, the weekly, daily, 240, and the 60. And for the ES mini, for the S&P 500, they are all set to bullish right now. Boy, we've got a choppy market out there. Take a look at the NDX 100. What do you have? Daily, 240, and 60 are set to bearish out here. Wow wild and crazy well that's why we got this choppy market out here if we just simply take a look at market breadth we're at odds between the s&p 500 and the ndx let's go take a look at the es mini let's go over on the uh get to those white panel screens out here so we know on the es mini the 30 minute was bullish what do we have on the 30 minute well right now we do not have a bottoming signal we have a roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered but we don't have is the bullish reversal candle price is below profile it's about to hit the resistance area between 4130 right at 41 34. Let's call 4134 or 4135. If price can close above 4135, we're likely looking at 4138. 
Above that, 41.44, and above that would be 41.57. But right now, price on a 30-minute basis is dealing with resistance. The ES Mini does have that positive market breadth. I expect it to get up to that 41.35 level and perhaps beyond. If we take a look at the um, all of its other time frames, 60, 240, and its daily we're still bullish. Now, with regard to the daily time frame, it's just a good old-fashioned consolidation between profile support at 41.18 and profile resistance at 41.88. We take a look at a five-hour time frame chart, which has a Rogemintum indicator top. We just simply see a series of uh, basically lower highs and lower lows out there. And we don't really have we don't really have any kind of bottoming signal with the exception of wave number seven. That is letter G out here. Now the current candle doesn't complete till two PM. That can extend itself as long as we get lower lows, but that is a potential for a bottoming signal. Do we have a bottoming signal on the four hour time frame chart? The answer there is no we do not. What we do know is that uh, and there is that uh, this is in a bullish configuration, meaning more instruments trading above profile than below profile, even though the ES mini for its 240 minute time frame is trading below profile. If we take a look at the 120 minute chart, no bottom signal there. At, oh, I take that back. Let's update this. This is showing us a TD9 count bottom that could form between 12 noon. That'll be bar number eight. 12 noon in the close today at four o'clock. So there's the potential of getting the close going into a, a, a bottom pattern going into the close tonight. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, what else do we see out here? Intraday, 10 minute, 15 minute, you've got some bottom signals there. Price right now is dealing with resistance. Uh, 41.32 is one level on the 15 minute chart. Well, that's both levels on the 15 and 10. And the next level of resistance that's being dealt with on the 10 minute chart is where the sellers are located at that center of its profile. And that's at the price range of, give me a moment here, I'll get that for you. That's right here at that 41.34 area, which is where we're trading right now. So we get above that, 41.44 could easily be a game. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES Mini. Let's switch over, take a look at the NQ, see if there's anything else out there. Oh, six, two, three. Um, Roger, it looks like you're looking for uh, day trades out there. I mean, you can use the information I just gave you on the ES Mini. Out here, we take a look at the NQ. Um, what you don't have really is great market conditions between the two. You'd like to see some, uh, you'd like to see a unanimous agreement. We don't have that with regard to profile market breadth out there. With regard to the NQ, the five hour time frame chart is going to complete a TD nine count bottom at 2 p.m. So watch the NQ. You could get a bottom signal there. It has negated its three drive to a bottom pattern. So let's get rid of those arrows that are on the screen out here. Uh, it does have wave number seven, that's letter G. So you need a higher low. Uh, this current bar that we're in completes at 2 p.m., so we won't really know about that until today's close. The 60-minute uh, time frame chart, I don't see any kind of a bottom signal there. I see a TD9 count that was um, negated. But at the same time, the 30-minute chart, which does not complete until another 16 minutes, this has the potential to generate a bullish three-river morning star pattern. That would then take us up to the battleground of 12,973, 12,978. And above that, that resistance zone of 13,003 to 13,009. The 15-minute chart's got a Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom, TD9 count on the 10-minute chart out there. You can watch those resistance levels, which is basically about 12,960, let's call it 12,968. Close above that, at least intraday, we should see a further move higher with 12,978 being next up on its cards. And then above that, 12,981. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So I've got the four daily equity future contracts up on our screen. I've got a couple of the weekly sets of uh, profile levels up there. So if you take a look at the upper left-hand chart, you can see the ES Mini should be back at a support level. We're close to the bottom of the profile at 41.18. We're at the center of its weekly profile, 41.26 out there. So it's in a pretty decent support area. The NQ... You know, it's below the top of its profile and headed towards a support, potential support zone at 12,866. Now, typically, when price gets back there, we, we like to see is when you're getting back to a daily level of support, which the ES Mini and the NQ may, more so the ES Mini. Um, then what you like to see are you like to see those uh, confirmations of the intraday signals on the uh, on the other charts out there. So here in the case of the NQ, TD9 count bottom on the 10 minute, roads meant to indicator on the 15 minute, roads meant to indicator potential. Uh, we won't know for another 11 minutes on the 30 minute chart out there. I don't see anything on the 60 minute, bar number eight on the 120 minute time frame chart, wave number six on the 240 minute chart out there, wave number six and a TD9 count bottom on the five hour chart. So actually all of this is sounding to me uh, and, and this is, you know, specifically with regard to Rogers saying, hey, can you find me some kind of an intraday uh, trade out there? I, 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 I think the NQ might be uh, the NQ or the ES may be generating that signal um, for you as we speak right now. So um, or you can be patient and wait for those longer term charts to go ahead and, and complete. I'll try to stick up the uh, ES mini here once again. Just again, uh, take a quick peek at, at those bottoms. It's when you get back to those levels of support on a larger time frame that if we really are at a level of support or key level, we should see turns on those intraday time frames. And so here you can see the 10 minute, the 15 minute with their roads meant to indicator bottoms out there. The 30 minute, I don't recall. Uh, that's got the roads meant to indicator bottom, just no bullish reversal candle. TD9 count bottom on the uh, 60 minute chart. Did that hold? That did hold. So you've got a bottom already on the 60, bar number 8 on the 120. That's still got to complete. 
Uh, no bottom signal on the 240 and wave number seven on the uh, five hour. So you're getting those bottom signals absolutely out there. Now, when you're getting those, but you're getting those bottom signals at the same time. And I'll switch back here to the uh, to the black background charts. We'll just go take a look at that U.S. dollar index out there. And so the U.S. dollar index right here. So we can see here, we'll just simply expand out the chart. We can see that, yeah, that nice buy the D point uh, pattern out there. That was formed here this way. I'll throw in the A to B equals CD just so you can take a look at that. The A point, really easy to identify. So this is the smaller um, buy the D point pattern inside the US dollar index. So it's basically a one to 1.618 level out there. If that area were to fail, then there's a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. I'm not going to draw that in at this stage because it really it doesn't it's not applicable. But what we can see is prices hit some trend line resistance. So if this is it for the rally in the dollar and it pulls back, then maybe what that's going to do or what that should do it should give a little bit of momentum inside of gold. And it's a hard call today to say whether it's going to really impact the equity markets or not. And this is quite frankly what I do want to see, um, and that is this correlation. So here, the top portion of this chart, this is the top portion of the June contract for the ES Mini. The center portion is the US dollar index. Both these are on daily timeframes. You can see their profile levels that are established. And down below is the correlation tool. Now, what the correlation tool is doing, I'm taking a five-day average. It's a directional average. When lines are below zero, that tells you about an inverse relationship, which, as you can see, uh, the ES Mini had predominantly had up until about the uh, March 10th time frame. It's about the middle of March out there. And now what we can see is there are more lines above zero on a five-day average than below zero. This tells us that now that would then say there is a directional correlation versus an inverse relationship. So with regard to what's going on inside the equity markets, look, it probably doesn't hurt if the uh, U.S. dollar index is top. But to the extent that it's going to uh, provide a, at this stage here, though, so the reason that I'm looking for this to decouple and, and it's and it's real reason to follow when we do begin to see global capital come to the U.S. and it will. When we do begin to see that significantly, we will see three things simultaneously happen. We will see the U.S. dollar index moving higher. We will see gold moving higher or metals moving higher. And we will see the equity markets moving higher. So we're already getting the decoupling here between the ES mini and the uh, dollar. We just need to continue to keep our eye on it. But we're seeing the first uh, we're seeing that first element. We don't have that same thing with regard to gold. So here I'll put up that we'll change this chart out. We'll go ahead and we'll put uh, Goldilocks in here. So if you give me a moment just to do that. Uh, again, we'll just use the uh, June contract. Do you see? So you got the June contract up top. I just got to make one change down below. No, we don't. We're all good. It's going to do its calculations down below. We'll see what. So here when we take a look at that correlation. We can see that this is still primarily an inverse relationship between gold and U.S. dollar. So we're not there yet where we're seeing that global flow of capital just says, I want the heck out of Dodge, wherever Dodge might be. And it's going to go to the place where it has the most certainty. Even if there's uncertainty here, it's still the most certainty out there. So um, here, again, you take a look at this, you had, uh, you, you know, gold has held its profile, so just as the U.S. dollars held its profile. So just a good old consolidation chop out there. Okay, let's move on to some requests out here. The first request coming in from uh, Greg, and he wants to take a look at the LNG. So let's go take a look at LNG for uh, Greg, and uh, I believe the question, well, the question is actually on my phone. So let's actually read. It says, good morning. Uh, would you take a look at LNG and, if time permits, CRK? I didn't catch that one, but I'll, I'll definitely get back to, to that for you. Well, we'll see if we can do it at the same time. How about that? So um, with natural gas at such low level, is it better to look at the producers? Good question. I don't know. Why don't we just go interpret the, ch the charts out there? So let's first take a look at LNG. When we take a look at LNG, LNG has a TD9 count bottom. That DD9 count bottom, Greg, would be negated with a close below 149.66. Right now we're trading at about 150.06. Let me get to my other charts out there. We do know that I've been having some data feed issues here during the show just because of so much stuff that I've got running in the background. So TD9 count, yeah, we're trading 149.93. 
And so you have still have a valid TD9 count. But if price closes below 149.66, we're likely headed back, I would say, to this uh, swing point here from March the 16th, the top of which is out at the 147.56, and the low is at 139.50. On a weekly time frame, you have a consolidation with inside its profile support there around 143.62. Same thing on the uh, monthly time frame. So, you know, do you take a position here? Um, the TD, it's nice that you got the TD9 count. You don't like the fact that price is below support in a red oscillator and change line. So what's a 30-minute chart here for LNG show us? Just curious. Shows... Um, Price broke through support, breakout support, but back above it. So that was a one-hit wonder, so to speak. I don't have a great readout here with regard to the 30-minute time frame. Just simply that it is still trading below profile support out there. So, Greg, your question, is it better to take a look at this LNG versus natural gas? I don't know. You also want to take a look at CRK. Actually, I do know. I think the answer to that is no. I think you might do both. But I do believe that natural gas is the place to be. It may not be today, and it may not be tomorrow, but it is coming very soon here. I believe it's coming very soon, and it should be a significant bottom that takes place. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. It's Comstock Resources, CRK, that we're taking a look at out here. And so, Greg, you know what I see when I take a look at the daily chart out here? I see nice bottom patterns. I see a series of, I see price rising, 
right? We've got a series of higher highs, higher lows out there, price pulling back about four or five days ago, testing breakouts, uh, t testing the South Center and change line support level, doing the same thing today. Now, right now, the upside potential seems to be capped at 1126, but this looks pretty good. Um, if you want to uh, take a position here on the weekly chart, you can see that uh, since the bottom, I don't have a bottoming pattern, but since that bottom, we have se we've not seen price get back to a prior weekly low. We have seen price get above prior weekly highs. Now, this week it's off. We haven't seen that take place just yet, so it's a little bit of caution. But I do like what I see here with regard to CRK. Now, let's go take a look at natural gas. We had a request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at natural gas as well. So it fits right within the theme that we're taking a look at. This is for Mr. Bill. Now, Mr. Bill, on a daily basis, he sees a uh, pennant was the message that I got. What I can share with you, Mr. Bill, is that the issue for natural gas would appear to be on this weekly chart, that oscillator and change line number. We can see that price has not closed above an oscillator and change line since September 2nd, the week of September 2nd. So quite a period of time. I would say if we get a close above that, Mr. Bill, that's going to be a signal of a potential change in trend out there. The reason why I say potential because there's profile support at 274, and price could be knocked back right from that level. On a weekly basis, what you'd really like to have is a bullish reversal candle. We don't have that. That's the bummer out here. Do you have to get that? No, it's just the preferred way to complete my bottoming pattern out there. But if price does close above that red oscillator and change line, that will qualify, too, as a bottom signal. On the daily time frame, what we have out here is you've got that nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. There's a bullish reversal candle, and then it consolidates with inside its profile. So in this case here, it's a $2.58 level. That is really key. 30-minute chart had a TD9 count bottom. Looks like that was yesterday sometime. Well, let's actually find out when was that. It's actually get the proper tool out there that was at uh, eight o'clock in the morning and that was uh, yesterday when natural gas and what it did was it bounced right up into resistance that was a profile level out there so with regard to natural gas you know mr bill i look at uh, the reason why i was saying to greg and you've heard me say this before the reason why i believe natural gas is a place to have a position at least at some point out here is because of that week or that yearly td9 count that we got so we are in bar number nine of a td9 count yes it can be the bar following bar number nine that uh, generates that pattern that would mean next year so that's always the potential but right now let's leave it as we see it which is we're currently in bar number nine and if we get a nice uh, bottoming signal some further bottoming signals on the uh, let's say the weekly chart out here it may be off to the races now the seasonal piece of it we had taken a look at this and the seasonal most certainly for natural gas has not come into effect out here and let's go put up natural gas first we've got to find it it should be right in front of me where is it where is it there we go natural gas and what we have out here as far as data is 32 years worth of it and 32 years worth of uh, data what we should have seen is we should have seen a market that was moving higher into about june 14th we don't have that so we're not inside we're not in in the month of uh, april was the uh, second best performing month for natural gas now april's not over but it is the 25th or 26th so it's pretty close to over out there and uh, we certainly didn't see that as we take a look at uh, this april so i don't know that the seasonal is going to really apply to natural well i would say at this stage here it has not applied to natural gas so that's natural gas for for um mr bill and the tiger's den and that takes care of uh, greg's questions as well let's get to our next question next question coming in from the Tigers, then, it's from Jambalaya, who wants to take a like, UPS. And his question is, is price headed to 164? So let's get back to that uh, chart out there. Let's try to find that chart. That is uh, UPS right here. So we take a look at UPS. The, the, the figure that sticks out to me, Jambalaya, is 174.07. And 174.07 is the bottom of its weekly profile. Price is below daily profile and daily breakout support. The monthly is below profile support out there. So the only level of support that I can articulate and go to right at this time is going to be that 174.07. You're asking about 160. Um, well, only way that's going to happen is price can break the back of buyers that are sitting at 174.07. And that's based upon that weekly uh, TAS market profile. With regard to UPS and its seasonal pattern, just curious what it does. Uh, let's go see if we can find it. I'm sure that we can. So let's type in UPS. Let's wait for this to get populated. Let's see how many years worth of data we have. That'd be 23. And uh, UPS typically tops out right about now. 
uh, April 29th, uh, historically over the last 23 years, with price moving lower into about the um, late part of uh, June out there. So that's the seasonal uh, process that we have going on here. Uh, but still, that support level, that key support level, 174.7 is what you should keep your eyes glued to, Jambalai. So hope that that helps you out, and thank you so much for your request. SNP inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Amazon. AMZN is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Well, that was Microsoft. He wasn't interested in Microsoft. He was interested in Amazon. So Amazon today, now depending upon the close, if price closes today above 104.30, let me see where we're actually trading, AMZN, I've got 104.39, 104.16. So we're 104.16. So what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the close of bar number five out here, S&P, and that close is at 104.30. If price closes above 104.30, Amazon will generate a TD9 count top. What happens if it closes below that? Well, you won't have a TD9 count top, period. It's just that simple. Then the question will be, well, does it close below its oscillator and change line? And if it does, that's at about 104.49. Then what that triggers is price moving back to support. Now, the chart that we're looking at is not picking up the new daily profile. So I'm going to switch over to that so that SNP can see that and he can take note of where the new buyers and sellers reside inside of Amazon. And we'll just simply expand out that chart. So as we expand out the Amazon chart, what you will see out here, SNP, is a new profile. It is bearish in structure. Now, my experience is that when price closes below the center of a bearish structured profile or above the center of a bullish structured profile, price will then get back to the next level. In this case here, it would be the bottom of the profile because it's a bearish structured profile or 101.92. So I think that is where Amazon is likely headed to. Um, whether you get a, um, well, I will say it's likely headed there as long as price closed below that green oscillator and change line right around the 104.47 level. Now, you like this profile in that it formed above the prior profile. So the signal that's being generated here for Amazon, that is a bullish signal from a profile perspective. You can see a trend line that's been drawn on my system out there. We won't really spend too much time on that. We don't really need to. So do we have a TD9 count top or not? That I don't know. But if price does close above bar number five's close, and again, that number out there to be watching is going to be 104.30. Price close above that, you will have a TD9 count top out there. So hope that helps you out, SNP. Um, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Dan inside the Tigers, I wanted to take a look at ticker symbol MCBR. I think that was the last chart that popped up here. Nope, that was Microsoft. So somebody wanted Microsoft. I apologize. I don't recall who. Um, but let's take a look at Microsoft. If we see Microsoft, it's trading now below the bottom of its daily profile. That bottom profile level is 282.65. Am I on the right charts out here? No. Let me switch over to the white background charts. Mr. Bill, I caught that. How about that? You'd have to hit me upside the head with that two by four. So now we're taking a look at Microsoft. And we take a look at Microsoft, we'll see the price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. That profile level's at 282.65. A second close below that would suggest that we head back to its breakout level. The breakout level for Microsoft is down to 272.05. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. The Dow up 135, s and is down 34, NASDAQ 100, 118, the Russell's off 24, semis are down 65, training's down 455 out there. We're taking a look at ticker symbol MCRB. That's a therapeutics company. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. So, Dan, uh, we take a look at this. Um, now, look, there's a sell the D-point pattern out here. You can clearly see that. That formed with this big old dark cloud cover candle that uh, completed on April the 18th. So, and price was also, while that form, while that was going on, price made its way back to its TD9 count breakdown area, 667. So 667 is a key level where you get across and close above, but really now it's going to be 687, the top of that dark cloud cover candle. Price is trading above the top of its profile. That's bullish. Price is trading above a green oscillator and change line. That's bullish. Wait a minute, Steve-O. You said we had a sell the D-point pattern. We do. So what we have here are neutral conditions. Neutral because we have the top. Neutral because price is trading above resistance levels. The weekly time frame does not have any kind of a top. The weekly time frame says, Steve-O, I want to get up to 730. It's TD nine count breakdown level. And the monthly chart is really confirming that as well because price is trading above profiles there. So everything here with regard to MCRB looks pretty darn good. How about its 30-minute time frame? What do we have out there on it? We don't have much. It's have a big old fashion sideways ish type move out there. But the daily, the weekly, and the monthly look good. The daily is just a bit of a caution sign because of the top. But again, its overall signal is neutral. Now, let's see this instrument, MCRB. Don't know if we can grab its data. MCRB. When I say grab its data, I'm referring to the data. Yeah, we can. That is compiled by the folks over at Seasonex. So here we actually have seven years worth of data. Now, on a seven-year time frame, Dan, what this typically does is this has typically tops out around now and really moves lower into, you know, the August time frame. But this, you know, is that a well, – let's see. what How many other – what can we do? I can only put it on a fiber. I could do – I could customize it. So I don't know what happened there. But seasonally speaking, uh, this really doesn't start to pick up until August. August is typically its best-performing month out there. But – that's what the uh, seasonal patterns say. You and I, we look, look, we took a look at the daily time frame, and then the daily time frame out here, it's neutral, uh, and it's bullish on the uh, weekly, and it's bullish on the monthly. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out, and uh, thank you so much for that request. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Fox. Uh, one of our dinners, Frank, has gone short 
uh, Fox. So what I'd like to share with you here, Frank, is that price yesterday when it pulled back, it was right back, it was right back or back, whichever you prefer. I prefer to use the word back versus brack because if I use brack, people are going to say, "What did he say?" Right. So it has pulled back to its breakout area. It's TD nine count breakout level twenty nine sixty eight, and it's held. And Frank. That level has been tested one, two, three, four, five times, six times now, including today. So be careful on your short trade. You're up against a key level of support that has been tested many times and has held. Now, if we take a look at the weekly chart out here, the weekly chart pulled back to a breakout level. But because that breakout level has already been tested and it failed before, I'm not really going to focus on that. What price is really doing, appears to be doing, it's just consolidating with inside its bullish structured, and that's the key there, bullish structured weekly profile. So you now, or not you, but the price of Fox is inside the bullish zone of its weekly profile. Now it's a decent range out there, 28.78 all the way up to 30.03. But nonetheless, you are in the bullish zone on the weekly basis. The daily has held a key level of support. I would feel much better about your short if price closed below 29.68. Why? Well, at least we could then say, it looks to me like price is gonna go target 28.78. And that's in fact what we would say, that's the bottom of that bullish structured weekly profile. However, there is another breakout area, 2888. Now, I'm not going to pay attention to that one either. So it's 2968. If that area uh, holds, then likely we bounce up to 3064. If you're going to sell, I'd say on a daily chart, it would be more towards the 3064 level than right here at a key support area that has helped. Now, you wouldn't see that on your charts because you, unless you're using the TD9 count system, which you should want to use the TD9 count system, especially for individual stocks that you trade because it will help you to identify key levels of support and resistance, let alone where are we at in a potential top or bottoming process out there? Monthly chart doesn't look great. Price below profiles is below red oscillator and change line. But it's that daily and the weekly that I think are the stronger influence as we speak right now. Also, on a daily time frame, we've seen how many days? Four consecutive moves to the downside. So remember, all instruments will typically do these little dance steps. No, it was five, five to the downside. So we had a five to the downside right back here on uh, March the 1st. We had a little bit of a, a rally for one day out there. But just be careful. This is... Um this looks to me more like it wants to bounce versus it wants to move lower out there. And on a 30-minute basis, to see if there's anything else out here that can assist us. And the answer is there's not. Uh, well, actually, there is. We're now starting to break out above the top of its bearish structured 30-minute profile. So that last bar, that 1130 bar, did close above it. A second consecutive close above 2997 is going to say a further rally. So, Frank, I do hope that helps you out. Obviously, there's no guarantees here whether my analysis of the charts is uh, correct or not. But hopefully that information will assist you in your decisions. Um, Mike wants to take a look at... Uh, uh, the YM. So let's go take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract. And Mike Watson wants to take a look at Microsoft. We, we, we did. Oh, you thanks for Microsoft. Okay, so that's where it came from. Perfect. Okay. Um, so let's get back to the YM charts out here. Let's actually get them going and take a look at it. 0623. Get these here populated. Mike is over in Portugal. Which is a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. I think Mike is still in Portugal, or Mike. I know you were moving uh, at some point in time. But either way, wonderful to have tigers all across the globe. So when we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. Perhaps the most important thing to realize and understand right now is that price is back at support, and support is at the bottom of its profile. The bottom of its profile is at the level of uh, thirty-three eight nineteen. That is a key level to watch. If price closes below that, then the Dow will signal a change in trend. Not until then. The five-hour chart, which has a Rhodes momentum indicator top out here, we see a series of basically um, lower highs. Sideways move really for the last um, you know several days out here. Uh, the four-hour chart, not anything there that's assisting us other than a consolidation with inside profiles. 33,832 is the number to watch there. Uh, similar type situation on the two-hour chart. 
33821 is a key level of support there. 60 minute chart price pulls right back into its bullish structured profile zone 33834. 33,849. So if that level fails, 33,834, that is, we're back to the lows of uh, TD9 count from yesterday or early in the morning on April the 24th. That would get you back to the 33,738 range. That's really about all that I see, Mike, out here for the uh, Dow equity future contract. So again, the, the big thing is that prices add support on the uh, daily time frame, and that's really lovely to watch is 33,819. You're now in Italy. Florence looking, oh, he's in Florence looking for a place to live. Now, that's very, very cool. I'm going to be in Florence, Mike. Not for very long, though. Um, so uh, let's, uh, so hopefully that's what, uh, hopefully I gave you the information that you were looking for in the Dow Equity Future contract. Um, so let's, we'll try to find something to use that's useful to each of us going into the uh, close. Right now, you've got the, uh, Dow down 143, S&P's off 33, NASDAQ down 115. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So let's spend some time on the SMHs. That's a request from Nicholas. That's as good as any place to end the uh, show out here. So, Nicholas, what we have out here with regard to the SMHs is an A to B equals CD to the downside out there. That B point formed on April the 6th. There was about 3.7 million shares there. 
when it was passed, it was passed with lighter volume. That was up until that was even including yesterday. Doesn't really matter. You still have an A to B equal C to you're beyond the one to one level. And that says to watch for a bullish reversal candle. So what I would say is price should go target 235.86. 235.86 is the bottom of its weekly profile. That is, unless some type of bullish reversal candle were to form, and that would then generate a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern. We don't have anything that suggests that's going to happen. In fact, if we take a look at the 30 minute time frame out here, we don't see any kind of a bottoming signal as we speak. Right now, we're only in bar number five. Um, so I don't see a bottom signal here inside the SMHs, and so they want lower price. Uh, with regard to the SMHs, we are now going to be down for what appears we will be down for three consecutive days. Its dance steps usually don't last beyond four or five sessions. So it's Tuesday. We should see a bottom form in the SMHs between today and Thursday. I'd more likely lean between tomorrow and Thursday, quite frankly. So I don't know about today. Uh, but we should be we should be nearing that. So you've got the A to B equal C. And if we are going to bottom here, we will see some type of bullish reversal candle. And that is just simply not in the cards as we speak just yet. So, Nicholas, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, lastly, I guess let's go back and take a look at the um, the intraday charts here. Here are the uh, here's the Dow. Let's go back to that ES mini. Uh, see what it is doing. At signals it was the NQ also that we were taking a look at. So let's see on the ES mini again. Would not be a surprise to see true support tested inside that ES mini. We talked about that. That's not at that 4118 level. He closed below 4118. Now that'll generate a, a change in trend signal. So what I see on these intraday charts, you can see the Rogeman Dim indicator signals there that are trying to form. And he got that uh, bar number eight on that two hour time frame chart. So it doesn't look like any kind of a uh, bottom uh, during the uh, day today. Folks, stay tuned. You got great trading. I uh, get uh, great uh, uh, shows lined up for you. And I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. Thanks again for joining us.